Now, in its response to the financial systems inquiry, the government set to introduce some new legislation to allow uh, mum and pop investors to invest in startups and small businesses. The legislation part of the government's drive to push innovation in Australia, but uh, there are other reforms required. So says my next guest, John Medved, uh, founder and CEO of Australian, uh, at least Israeli headquartered, Our Crowd, the world's largest equity crowdfunding platform. He's live at our Sydney CBD studio. There was a Sydney connection. John, as you rightly uh, are aware, you're sitting there in the heart of uh, the city for us this morning. Welcome to the program. Let's just sort of understand how Israel got to where it got to. Uh, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but just walk me through the awareness, number one, of this area and the willingness, number two, of politicians to play along. Well, first of all, Israel has become this massive player in innovation finance. Uh, this year, there'll be over $5 billion invested in Israeli startups. That's more than double what it was in 2013 when it was just 2.2 billion and uh, we're seeing no let up in the pace of both investment today increasingly from china and asia but all from all over the world our companies also get bought quite frequently by multinationals in terms of m a acquisitions there are 350 multinationals now active in terms of doing r d and buying israeli companies and they go public mostly in new york Although I hear a couple are coming here to Australia, which I think is very good news. Mm. The reason I'm here in town, actually, is there's a big confab tomorrow mm. uh, of an Israeli and Australian companies who are talking about innovation. Mm. There's a lot to be learned and to be done in terms of working between Oz and Israel. Both countries are, I think, clever countries, smart countries, great schools, great human capital. The difference in Israel is that we've got an ecosystem mm -hmm. that has enabled entrepreneurs to go off and do what they need to do. We have the ability to create these small companies, get them funded, and get them growing. And I think soon you will see that ability here with the steps I understand the government under Malcolm Turnbull is about ready to take. Yeah, it's, in fairness, though, this is one of the kind of the, the tyrannies of federalism, is it not, though, that you can have the best will in the world in the center, but if the other players are not willing to do their part, unlike Israel, which kind of can just click its fingers and do it, <laughs> we are rather hamstrung in reality on the ground politically. Well, I, I think that, by the way, the government has to be an enabler. The government doesn't have to actually write the checks. It's up to your viewers, the investors, because what's going to happen with crowdfunding is that you're going to leap over that sort of old school step of venture capital, which used to be bring a couple hundred million dollars together, put a couple of old guys in a room and choose some winners. That's not working anymore. Mm -hmm. The next step is going to be crowdfunding, which is what we do at our crowd. We aggregate 10,000 investors from all over the world. And we've actually deployed 200 million or roughly 300 million Aussie in 90 different companies over the last two and a half years without a venture fund. We do it by letting the individual accredited or sophisticated investor, we're not quite yet mm -hmm. mom and pop, your initial go is at uh, $10,000 mm -hmm. per investment, but we then aggregate this money and then we allow these companies to gain access to capital like never before. They mm -hmm. estimate the crowdfunding this year is going to be worldwide over 30 billion dollars and the fact that Oz is now getting into this, I think, is going to really jumpstart this innovation economy. This comes at a time, though, of course, where the new treasurer in Australia has made it quite clear of his priorities when it comes to balancing the budget, reining in the deficit, not foregoing the kind of capital gains, goodbye to all that, uh, relief that would accompany a crowdfunding program in Australia, arguably. That's the carrot you have to dangle, is it not, in front of investors in order for, to get them to actually pony up with cash. Yeah, well, first of all, it has to be a good investment, and I think the government can play a role by making it tax advantaged, whether it's giving you some kind of a credit on taking these kind of risky investments or it's giving you some kind of downside protection. This happens in England, it happens in my country, Israel, and I think it's money well spent. Who decides but, if it's a good investment? Because I mean, I know in Israel, certain conditions have to be met in order to be able to write off, uh, for tax purposes, uh, the investment by foreign investors. That's correct, okay, except that today most foreign investors meet this mm. and, uh, you know, we're able to offer investors from around the world the access to these investments in Israel and elsewhere. And I think, by the way, that you're going to have a regimen. Right now, in Oz last year, there was about $200 million invested in venture capital. 
My own personal prediction is you're going to see this go up by a factor of five or ten over the next couple of years. You're still not going to get quite to Israel's level of five billion dollars yeah. this year U.S. But I think that you're going to see a dramatic increase. I predict it. And I'm happy to come back yeah. next year and to check how we did. A dramatic increase in investment in, Israel, in Aussie tech companies. Can we talk about, though, the vision? Because you're talking about a dramatic increase while well, in the next breath saying few lo local entrepreneurs have that global vision like uh, Seek, like um, Altassian, you know, in order to take it to the next level. So why will you have an increase if also you're saying that there's a lack of mindset to think globally? Well, first of all, I think many of them do, but they've lacked the global network. So the moment that investors like us are coming into this market and other overseas guys. We come with our networks and all of a sudden you don't have to figure out how to go meet the people in Silicon Valley or how to make contacts in China or the UK. You get that help from your investors. And I think that as the more people sort of look beyond the boundaries of Perth and Melbourne and uh, Cairns up north and say, you know what, we need to get to the States. We need to get to Asia. You're going to have more Australian companies are going to go for the gold. And the more that you celebrate the Atlassians and the Sikhs and their mm -hmm. successes, that's going to feed on itself. I think Campaign Monitor just went ahead and raised $250 million here. There's a not inconsiderable number of Aussie entrepreneurs who are watching or listening, who are thinking right now about how to make the, best, the next best thing. Mm. They're in your universities. You got the technology. I'm predicting that you're going to have the companies. What is the next best thing, though? When you say that, it, it's beguilingly seductive. But to your mind, uh, what hasn't already been formulated or isn't already in, in development, as it were? Well, so I, I think that the next best thing is not the new social thing or not pets.com. It's going to be technology that's hard technology. Mm. Stuff that we do in Israel, whether it's drones, robotics, big data, the mm. Internet of Things, analytics, mm. cybersecurity. This is where people want to put their money and where I think in, uh, entrepreneurs want to put their efforts. And I think you'll see great kinds of technology startups. Look, you guys invented Wi-Fi. I've met and, and seen several Australian entrepreneurs who've got the technology, want to work on hard projects. Yeah. And we're looking for those. So We've invested already in two in this country. One of them is measuring Parkinson's company mm. called Global Kinetics. The other is doing NFC marketing called Tap It. And we're looking for more. Right. So your viewers are invited to send via rcrowd.com mm. uh, their proposals mm. for investments. Come join us on the platform and invest in the next best thing, mm. both here in Australia and the rest of the world. I take it the check's in the mail for that plug, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll give it to you all the same. <laughs> just, just a thought as well, briefly, education, the actual, you know, from the classroom to the boardroom, to paraphrase. How do you actually ensure that the, the next wave of these innovators are getting the right smarts? Because often the criticism is here, the teachers don't even know the curriculum when it comes to coding, etc. It's all very new, fast moving. Uh, it's not synonymous with uh, you know, what they're coming out qualified to do from teachers training college. Well, well, first of all, I think education happens not only in the classroom, but in an ecosystem, a lot of informal stuff. In my country, Israel, a lot of the education goes on in the army. For, believe it or not, that a lot of the sort of entrepreneurial skills are gained in the, in the units. And I dare say, I've met a, a, a guy here with an incubator called Blue Chili, mm -hmm. where he's a former uh, Aussie military guy, and he got a lot of entrepreneurial smarts and experience in the military itself. I think you can get a lot of these street smarts and a lot of this sort of have-a-go mentality out side of the classroom. The classroom has to do its job, but you've got world-class universities. What you need now is just a little bit more chutzpah, or mm. the daring, if you will, and especially the willingness to fail. Because if you go out there and you have a go, you can't you know, expect the nanny state to, to bail you out. You've got to take the, the, the consequences of, of taking the risk. Failure is part of the, the equation, but hopefully there'll be some huge and wonderful successes along the way. You need, as your tagline under our crowd, uh, the doyen of chutzpah, or something like that. Get that into I'll take the title. It. I like right. it. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. All the very Thank best. You. Okay. John Medved, there, founder and CEO of Israeli headquartered. Uh,